Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Classic Quest podcast. Um, it's your boy, HSR. It's your boy, Chris Chrome. And it's your lady friend, Bonnie. So you may have noticed last week there was no Classic Quest episode. This wasn't for, like... We had a tactical foul. We, like, recorded the whole thing and went into editing, hit play on the files, and there was no sound. No sound. So now we've tested, and it it should work. We've released, like, two episodes, three things since. So definitely it works. It was just unfortunate, and it was awful. So We caught up with the Dear White People, so if if you want to go check that out. Yeah, Definitely check that out. And so... This is actually our second take during this uh, review, so if it happens to not be our best efforts, we do want to apologize in advance. We do. It's just, you know, redoing something, it never captures the same magic as the first one, and, and so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we can here to, well, I mean, to, to we try to impress have, you fine folks. We might also have another opinion this time around. That's it. So. It's not so <clears throat> fresh. It's more like rehearsed. We've listened to it a little bit more. We've already had the conversations. It's like, okay, but still, we're going to do it for y'all. Chris, what's the album? Well, for this week's Classic Quest album, we decided to go with Jay-Z's album, Reasonable Doubt. Yes, that is the one. Um, we uh, we reviewed Jay-Z's 444, and based on the number of dislikes we got... <laughs> and the comments telling us how that album wasn't for us and how we like missed something on it and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe they're right. Let's go back to the beginning of Jay-Z and uh, run through them a little bit on the classic yeah. well, list. Taking a look at 444, I mean, it is a lot of, I want to say wisdom and knowledge that he's trying to give back. So I guess the reason... For not going back and listening to his old music, you might not completely understand what he's trying to like flip, right? Yeah, and That's like what he's become now. Like he's right, very different absolutely. from what he started from, but he still like maintains his roots. Mm. So it's kind of cool. But I mean, like I I knew going into this, like I was hesitant. Like I I'm not, and I've never really been like the biggest Jay Z fan, and I know how like. How much people really love Jay Z and like Jay Z fans are like hardcore, hardcore, um, and so it makes me nervous because I'm like, mm, if I don't like everything, I really hope everyone's not gonna hate me. Well, listen, it's it's okay. Like I've never, me too. I've never really been a Jay Z fan. I know Jay Z. Um, I've heard him back when he came out with uh, Beyonce. Like he does have good hits. Like yeah, he's got good but... music. I just never really followed the bandwagon, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I remember getting into rap when I was in high school, and Jay Z was popping at the time. I can remember when Can I Get I came out, Big Pimping came out, Black Album, The Blueprint, uh, all this shit was happening, and so I can remember that. Mm-hmm. Then I remember him retiring. And after he started retiring, I kind of lost a little bit of interest in him. When did he retire? Because isn't he still touring? Early to mid-2000. No, that's the thing is he retired. Like, the Black Album, I think, was supposed to be his last album. I'm certain somebody in the comments below will correct us. But essentially, he retired, and he made a big marketing gimmick, and then he just kept coming back, and then he was doing singles. And it was just, like, a big ploy in the middle of the 2000 era. So around then, I kind of lost interest. I, I kind of felt he was he was so too big for his bridges, per se, as they say. Mm. But, um, nah, like, he was always talented. It was just, he's always kind of, you know, to me, been, like, this cocky guy who just brags about being rich. So it was, like, you respected him. I guess that's, him. like, his go-to thing. Right. I, I, like, you respected him, but it isn't exactly, like, I don't know. I never liked him as much as his music. I mean, you have to admit, I mean, you have something like 99 Problems and it's fucking ridiculous or Dirt Off Your Shoulders fucking ridiculous. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so many hits like, I, but ridiculous. I find his, like, songs, like, are, like, there's, like, a disconnect between, like, him and, like, his persona and, like, what he gives off and then, like, the things that he talks about you in his songs. I, I, I understand that disconnect. I feel like... So I just feel like he's not, like, really... Is he, you know is he true is? to what he's saying? I feel like, like he's making it for the listener. I feel like it's well, more like he's putting it in I feel like the... after he got with Beyonce, his, his like style changed. Well, right? yeah, that, yeah. That's, and that's And then they became like whatever. I, I lost interest. Frankly, the, the public life of Jay-Z and Beyonce is so it boring to me. It became more about yeah. their yeah. life I, and I relationship. I never ever cared. I know there's Beyonce lovers out there, and I'm sorry. like, but Girl, It's yeah. like their music and their personalities are not the same thing to me. I don't... They're, they're quite dull in real life I find like I don't 
But well, they don't really seem to do much. Well, Jay Z makes money. Stand real, there and just G's, be like, real G's move well, in silence. Yeah, I gotta though. say, man, Jay Z is a very respectable businessman. I mean, what he went from nothing to like eight hundred and eighty-six yeah. million. I think is yeah. the last time I saw. I mean, so he's no doubt, like he's obviously an intelligent guy. And I don't know, but I have to say, I never really listened to Reasonable Doubt until like the first time we recorded this album review. And I, I have listened to Volume Three, The Life and Times, in full. But when I was too young to register, I understand what it meant. And I otherwise, I've never listened to a full jay-z album before this hell i didn't even realize when renegades came out you know i didn't even know i could not tell you half the albums the singles are off of at this time fair enough but uh reasonable doubt's apparently a polarizing album so just to go on bonnie's opinion if you guys don't agree with us that we understand we're also just recognizing our ignorance in advance we're doing what we can and learning as we go but uh, apparently, reasonable doubt has Jay Z fans like split. It's either like the best album or the well, worst. Well, I mean, album. most places that I like was reading. I mean, a lot of them were were saying that you know it is kind of like a controversial like album, and like some people do think that it does deserve to be on like top lists, and then and then some of them it's like higher up, and then some of them it's like you know like top ten, and then some of them it's like in the top hundred. But right. you know, so I mean, it all it's all based on somebody's perspective on what you like and what you don't like. I mean, somebody who somebody who likes the sound that Jay Z brings or that Jay Z well, like learned and built off of. Of course, we're they're just gonna comparing like Jay Z like to Jay Z even here. There are people who are saying that. Like the blueprint makes you know reasonable doubt look like shit and vice versa, right? right. Mm-hmm. And so even just outside of the list, I mean the lists are kind of whatever. I mean, shit. but I mean if Jay Z decides to make reasonable doubt sound one way, right, and have one type of concept or message, and then he decides to take it the way on blueprint, like yeah, I don't even think it's so, fair I to mean, really compare, just to compare both compare albums, it, right? but I don't like, think it's fair to do that because you're, you're, there's I two think different. That you're gonna have no. I couldn't if I wanted to. If you okay, but just to counter that, like as a Lincoln Park fan their albums consistently genre hop and change styles and right. stuff. And it becomes really like there's albums you have to defend more so than others. And then okay. there's ones that, you know, maybe... Because, like, Jay-Z went from being poor to being rich, and his music went from being poor, as we'll see on this album, Well, that's why he brags about rich, it, and, right? like, that's what he wants. And so everything kind of changes, and, and maybe you just prefer a certain style to another. I don't know. I'm, I'm supposed that's the fun of this music uh, criticisms, is that... It well, is he just is versatile an endless and like what debate. changes in his life, like a, like is a reflection in or reflects in his music, you know. So it's like, as he gets richer and wiser and whatever, like his music changes. But, it's more than but that. you see, I like that. I like that how he can how he and evolves. like and like what you said earlier. This he went from being poor to being rich. In this in this album, he talks about going from being poor to being rich. We do have a feel. We'll talk about the album, right? We I will mean, talk about the album. If you just want to compare something like that, city of New York, kind of like vibe, and you right. listen to what Jay Z's rhymes are like there, and you want to compare it to like Reasonable Doubt, it's like a world apart. Oh yeah. Yes. And for me, like, that's, that's like, like a lot more like mainstream, the, that like part of his career, really popular, and like not so interesting to me. And anyway, let's talk about Reasonable Doubt. What do you think when you uh, hear the title and you see the cover with the Jay-Z with his hat on and the cigar? He looks cigar like a pimp, you know? Like, he looks like an, he looks an like old a school don. pimp. Yeah. I see a don. I don't see yeah. a pimp. Because a pimp, it's a more narrow hat and, like, it's more... But he's obviously wearing and... something that's quite expensive. He's got, like, the scarf and, like, but, like that nice suit I mean. and the nice like, hat. I, like, like, he's obviously... And, like, kind of hiding Godfather. in the shadows. Like, he's kind of like, hmm... You know, it's like, like a, I'm watching, but like I'm here and I'm seeing what's going on, and you know he's flossing at the same time. I t- picture like a Godfather role, like he's in charge. Like he he has this confidence in the way he's like standing there, right? It's not mm-hmm. you're right, but he's also like I'm the king. And yeah, you can just see it even there on this first album cover. I didn't I didn't realize this the first time we did this part this episode, but when I took a look at it again, and I and I really like just took a moment, I feel like. He's giving people reasonable doubt. Like, he's putting on this, like, Godfather, Don, whatever you want to call yep. it, king-type image, and he's still kind of portraying that, like, people are still going to doubt him, even though he's making this big-ass statement that he is king shit. And it, it's just really yeah. cool how he how he plays that into the title. And if I'm not mistaken, reasonable doubt is when you can prove that there's just enough doubt that you're not guilty for a crime in court and shit, unless I'm mistaken, so... It's also kind of alluding that his lifestyle is almost based around the dangerous. idea of reasonable doubt. Like his whole right. world is about casting shadows well, and illusions. It's not, o- it's not only that. Smart guy. It's not only that. Stays out of trouble. No, I feel like no matter where where you go, 
as an artist, as a creator, as somebody building something, you're always going to encounter doubt. And it's it's something you can't escape. And I feel like he's trying to just go like, you can't escape it in a, in a sense that it's, I don't know, There, I, I heard something and I can't really get, remember exactly what, um, what the what the, uh, the 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 proper context was, but it was just trying to imply that there's always going to be somebody to doubt you on what you're doing. And I was like, okay, I can see how that works in with the right. title. Yeah. Well, anyway, do you guys want to start talking about uh, the album? Yeah, let's sure. jump in. Well, in truth, you just can't knock the hustle. Can't no, do you it, cannot. Man. Over with hundreds. I'm one, one of the best, best niggas that done it. Six digits and running. Y'all niggas, niggas don't want it. I like this job. I wasn't sure what to expect. Like I said, uh, it was my first real Jay Z experience of outside of 444. So this is really cool. First of all, I like how he flexes his flow. Like yeah. it's like he pushes it to the limit. He makes sure in the very first verse that he can do some tricky chopper shit. Even he slips it and just be like, I can do it. And then, does, you know, just keeps it complicated and fun the whole way through. He's like, really presenting his diversity in his Yeah, skills. it definitely sets a tone for, like, what's happening. And he enunciates so clearly, and he has, like, the right kind of, like, theatrics to it, right? Like, mm -hmm. he knows how to laugh or to cut lines, and you're like, oh, Jay-Z is, in fact, a cut above your average rapper. Because so many of these dudes, it's like... They rap well. They have good rhymes and stuff, but, but there's they're no not creative in the sense of putting more like um, emphasis on how they present themselves. And he's interesting. Like you, even <clears throat> though like we don't really, I don't really like him necessarily. Like he's still an interesting guy, and like you want to, you want to like watch him and see what's going on, and like listening to him, and like what he does is like entices you in. And I, and I, what I like about Jay Z is right off the jump you can see how he thinks different than let's say the other guys who are are living comparable lives. So he's, he's clearly a plan. drug dealer. He's clearly a drug dealer. But even shit like saying I make sure. That's short what he's talking about. Well, no, I don't think it's so much that. I think it, like he he says shit like I make short term girls to make sure because that's like a a way to plan effectively to make sure that you you break your shit down into realistic chunks so that he's mm -hmm. always able to accomplish missions. He's very organized. Other people are like far-fetched and like way out there and like oh i want to be rich jay-z's like nah i want to move this then i want to move that and he's like making planned calculated moves like he he's... wants to be like the, the the godfather and he talks about like don juan and like um carleone yeah so like you know he, he's talking about people who are from like where he's from well so. I, he also kind of presents the idea that he's amassed X amount of wealth and he does play in this expensive life, but he also knows he hasn't made it yet and he's got this thirst and this, this hunger No, he for knows it. he's the best. I'm pretty sure well, he, he knows he's that. the best, but he knows because he's the, he also says he hasn't made a million yet and he wants to and make he, that, he, he's so he's not about there. It, but he's also got this drive to want to get there and he knows what he has to do to get mm -hmm. to there. Mm -hmm. And he makes a very good... Um, point in expressing himself on what he's chasing for and how he's going to make it. He's very, uh, I, I like the way Jay-Z is very smart and creative in terms of how he writes his lines. Um, he he writes them in a way where it's he's kind of like bragging, but in a way teaching you. That's it. You know? Like you can tell that he's not just trying to brag. He's saying, look, I've done it. And well, he does to say that he's like rich enough that he yeah. can go on shopping, shopping spree. Right, but that's like the that finesse on top see, of it, though. See, but look he, also, at it. he does also say that he's thankful that he like gets like the, the opportunity and like he gets to do all these traveling, but, all, all these trips and stuff because of his music. Mm. So, But he also implies he knows that he's he, talented too. he thinks bigger, right? right? I think what he's trying to Im imply is that when he brags about it, I don't see it in the same way as the average guy. So you'll hear the average rapper will, will brag about stuff. But it'll be like, my girl's hotter, my life's better, this is that. And it's kind of like the be all end all. Jay-Z's more like, if you think more like I think, you can have the same kinds of rewards that I have. No, it's not and, so much do even, what he does. No, 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 because hear me out. Even in this song, if I'm not mistaken, this is where he breaks down the fact that when he drug deals, he leaves the city. He goes out and he finds He doesn't get his hands clean. And, He's very... And he, but it's you know smart. what? He's not like it's not like he snitches on himself. He's very again creative on how he what, explains. What I'm this. saying is, is that because he thinks bigger and he explains almost in that kind of a way. Look, like leave your home block, leave your hood, go and see other things, go learn about new cultures. And you know what? It's kind of like coded messages. Maybe saying you need to travel isn't realistic, but yeah. if you go to Miami and move some bricks somewhere else, you might make money. You it might be a is? more effective way to communicate the idea. You know what I just thought it is. 
it's like for a quick minute all these rappers were so focused on on like repping their hood and being true to where they come from and jay-z yeah. was kind of just like yo i'm he's still like, represent true. but like you go you know but go represent somewhere else go. Well, i don't think it's about representing somewhere else i think no, it's he about says that. like seeing other places yeah you know but he says both and well yeah um, I don't know. I gave this track a four. Uh, the part of it is Mary J. Blige's chorus. Um, she sounds great, but she also sounds kind of subdued in the background. Yeah. The intro part, which contextualizes Jay Z as like the enforcer for this drug operation, putting mm-hmm. him into a, a big role in the like. I was sad there wasn't more Mary J. Blige. Yeah, and when you think about that intro, it's really cool for context setting, but the fact that I have to play through like 45 seconds or whatever of this intro every time before it comes in. Because it's like this big quote from like a uh, Scarface or something. Well, uh, I think it's it's like it wasn't that it was a quote. It was actually a guy who recorded. And it's quoted by Pain in the IS. And um, basically, it's the mixing on it. It's so quiet compared to like when the song kicks in that it's just awkward. Yeah. And then, um, I, I don't know. So for me, it's a four. It's a really amazing track for the parts that are Jay-Z in the track. But then there's the shit, like Mary's kind of subdued. And yeah. I, I don't know. So four on five. It's it's Jay-Z sounds great. Nice. Bonnie? Um, I gave it a 3.5. I like that it was slow and jazzy. Um, you know, and it's just kind of about him flossing a little bit. Um, but... Yeah, and it sets the tone, but it was all right. It wasn't the best intro I've ever, you know, listened to, but it was all right. Nice. I actually gave this song a five on five in terms of how um, it can really get you in a very positive mood in terms of wanting to succeed. Um, I don't, okay. I'm not bothered by the intro. I like the intro because I know it's talking about drugs, right? But in terms of... It's talking about do you have the guts to do what you got to do to succeed? Do you have what it takes to do certain actions that will make you progress? And I like that type of message. And I like what Jay-Z is saying in the song. And I purely also like Mary J. Blige's voice. She's always had a beautiful voice she to me. Lovely. I've always liked the way she's presented herself. Um, I didn't feel she was uh, so subdued with the, with the music um, in terms of how you felt it. But other than that, I thought this was a really, really great track. So five on five. All right, well, so we can say it's all just uh, politics as usual. You betcha. Comes to this cheese, y'all like three blind mice. I'm smoking bros who pump Willie Yag. So, politics as usual. Good song, good beat. Um, I like it how it's a little smoother than usual than some of the other tracks that Jay Z has on this album. I found um, it had like a bit of a disco y feeling. Did you know? I did, but that's just me. I don't know if anybody else is going to feel that way. Okay, it does have a little dancey feeling to it. Um, in terms of flow, Jay Z's really cool on how he mixes up the words and how he does his rhyme scheme. Um, I didn't particularly get the entire, I guess, concept of the track. I understood that he's like living in the fast lane and he's got certain things he has. Well, he's just to talking do. about like how hard and real he is, and that you know life is all about you know making money, getting girls, and staying away from the cops and like not getting caught. So, so. it's like it's like an extension of the. F- previous track in a way yeah I, I would say that that that's true it is kind of like an extension of the previous track except i don't really see it so shallowly not to insult your guys is what i'm saying it it's just you're right about the fact that again he's portraying the consequences of his life he's saying because of how i'm living the the way i think about this business the way i'm approaching this like a politician per se I'm being aware of the situation. I'm being intelligent. Mm -hmm. I'm being calculated. I'm being a fucking real boss with it. Well, he doesn't want to go to jail because he knows that, like, he could go to jail for 10 years. It's it's more than that. It's the way he thinks. It's so he he ends up, honestly, rapping about some of the same stuff as a lot of the other guys. But for me, there's a difference in in kind of how he raps about it. Like, you can tell that Jay-Z was meant to be the chief executive officer of something. Like, you can just tell, right? rappers. But when you hear it... He's intelligent and, like, business-driven. But he makes really smart choices. And the way he plays it, he's patient and he's calculated. And he comes at it... He listens a lot, I think. Maybe that's why, like, we don't know him so well. Is that he's not a big talker. I think he listens a lot. All I have to say is, on this track, he comes in kind of smooth. And he comes in kind of portraying some of the things he's dealing with. Some of the rewards he's getting. His fears. It just kind of puts you almost like the stream of consciousness flow of Jay-Z... How he thinks. And, and that makes me really appreciate the track. I give this a four because, I mean, 
it isn't like the greatest track I've ever heard, and there are definitely better ones in terms of it. I feel like the beat by the yeah. end of it's kind of annoying. The yeah. flow is kind of stagnant. So as it's much as the rhymes and the words and are good, you have to really be in the mood for like that kind of old timey rap to put this on yep. and just like feel it through. On the other hand, I feel like this is a track where it's worth like learning every word to because A is flows again talented and it's different. Like I could see this being like in the background of like you know like a party or even like a soundtrack somewhere like it could be playing somewhere in the background or something well ju just keep in mind though that no, as in a much, movie but okay. as much as it's like a similar subject matter to the first song the flow is completely different and he's he's got like a different tempo a different yeah. like approach he's got to good it. control he's got I, I you you notice multiple times on this album i'm gonna say it now that he has this way of listening to music and feeling a different um type of tempo than what you would hear on the track and it's really cool how he presents that but all i'm saying is that if you look at it we're two tracks in like we did meek mills uh last night right and in the meek mill we noticed that it's a lot of the same thing like even when he tries to change it it still kind of comes off the same thing and here we've got two tracks and it's like two almost completely different jay-z's track to track and to me that's an impressive start to this album well he's obviously well, versatile and he's keeping it consistent in terms of how jay-z is the boss and his personality is reflecting more so in the way he thinks even than what he's rapping about at least for me this is truly interesting as an album so far yeah fair enough what'd you guys give it i gave it a 3.5 um i thought it was good and catchy but for me it would, again like it wasn't like the best one or anything but it was all right nice I give it a four on five. I thought it was really cool, really smooth, really nice. Um, I did think it was just kind of like a little bit of a reiteration or a continuation of the first track. Um, but other than that, nah, you have to be in a mood. Okay, so uh, <coughs> next up we have a collaboration of a... Uh... Brooklyn's Finest. Yeah. What's up on him? What's your name? Who shot your mob ties like Sinatra? Uh, Peru at here, some um, the Notorious B.I.G. Big A. Jay-Z. And uh, from what I understand, there was trouble getting this song cleared at first because uh, the Bad Boy crew was like, what the fuck's a Jay-Z? We can't put Biggie on that shit. Mm -hmm. They finally got it out. but um, They're they, representing Brooklyn, guys. Duh. But they do it so well. Honestly, the little... I like how they mesh. I they like they how have they like mesh. this really cute little like back and forth exchange. And I, I say cute, but they're obviously talking about something that's like about robbing and killing people and stuff but you know what but, I like, I like tell but it's, they're friendly you know and, and it sounds I like positive that. it sounds positive in a way it, it, it's, it's twisted because it is talking about like repping your city doing what you gotta do robbing you know selling drugs blah 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 but it's got this positive little sound beating upbeat in the background where you're kind of just like Okay, this this is like a, your general Tuesday. We're just gonna go, you know, sell <laughs> drugs and have fun. Well, I think it's a little more like there are two of the bigger names, or there are two names that are getting targeted a lot, right? Yeah. Sure. And they're trying to establish, like, look, we're the best. If you come at us, and then they just lay down bars, right? So it is cute the way they go back and forth. It reminds me of great collabs like Red Man and Method Man or Eminem and Dr. Dre. Yeah. Or, or uh, I don't know. I'm certain there's a lot more out there that exist. And um, the way they do, like, it just, it's like everybody drops a couple bars and flips it. And then what's really amazing is just the end of everybody, like, let's say Jay-Z's finishing a line like this. Biggie's first line is going to tie in directly and then Biggie's last line is going to tie right into Jay-Z's yeah, line. Yeah, it's really good. And they pull on their, like, career. Like, he makes a little Tupac joke. He fucking, like, their flows are crazy. Everyone is different. So it's like they get to showcase their versatility and come in with all the various swags and styles they can, like, come up with on this track. Intense, insane flows. I really think this beat is, like, truly next it's level. It's really unique. It's not... It's, it's not, very interesting. It doesn't drag on. It does It, doesn't it almost get makes boring. me, like, picture a saloon in a western bar and some fun vibes. I see that. Like that. I see it's that. It's kind of hypnotizing and good, and, like, you just want to keep listening to it. And then uh, the only... My only grievance is I don't really like the hook. It, it kind of yeah, sounds... Yeah, they say um, Jay-Z, Big... Yeah, Big Smalls n-words shit in your drawers and i'm like why are you why are you gonna come poop in our underwear that, that's fine it's not so much i think well, it's saying they're gonna get you so scared <laughs> that you're going to shit in your drawers nah but um well i don't know it's just the the chorus sounded so much like the verses and it, it wasn't like 
I don't know. There was no distinction and difference. So it was just like a, a nonstop onslaught, which is really good. But I feel like even a scratchy thing or something more distinctly different would have made this fucking perfect. Either way, four and a half on five. I thought this was like Jeez. incredible. This is like two legends of rap in their like prime of like young. Well, Jay Z in his youth, Biggie in his prime. Fucking well, laying he was alive. it down. Oh, this is great. Fair enough. I also gave it a four point five on five. I really like this one. But I do have like a little thing for Biggie, so I mean I'm a little biased, obviously. That's true. Um <laughs> but I liked it. I mean I liked that he was just being honest and he's just like talking about, you know, robbing people and stuff like that. And um Jay is just talking, you know, Jay, because that's just, you know, first name basis. His name is Sean. Sean Carter. Yeah, but he likes it when I call him Jay. Okay. Anyways, um, so Jay and I, uh, <laughs> so hold on, I don't even remember where I was, t- what I was talking about now. This is oh, one of the when blooper he, scenes. No, and like the, he was saying, when you, when you like send people to kill him, he's gonna kill you and the people that sent you sent to kill him, because people are doing that apparently. But I don't know if that is just like in rap or in real life. I think he's the Don and he's establishing himself as like the top boss. He's saying, look, you might think I'm just going to do this, but really I'm going to do this and this just to show you how fucking severe the consequences are. And so- it's interesting that they're staying, that they're so rich, these, these guys, and they're still staying and living in the hood. It's like, it's crazy. It's like, why would you stay there? Because that's where they grew but up. But it's, it's like, where they, they have to stay from. there. And it's like, because they're part of this. This community. gang and this community and this whatever, this, this pull well, that's like bigger than who they it's are. It's about giving back and, and wanting well, to I mean, make sure that your another community note, is on its feet. If you live in Brooklyn your whole life. Although I doubt Jay-Z still lives in Brooklyn, right? Well, he was in like New Manhattan York. Manhattan or something like that. Either way, I'm saying you're not like, you're going to move to a nicer house. You're going to move to a better location per se, but... I don't know. Why They're would still you involved leave? in all like this like crazy gangsterism and like still so rich that they don't have to be. But I guess you know you're in it for life. Yeah. yeah. Well, I gave the song a five on five. I actually really thought it was super cool. I like the nice. way Biggie and Jay Z mesh together. I like the fact, like I said, it sounds like it's some positive. We're gonna go do this if you fuck with us type song. Um, I understand where you're coming from, Holden, on the terms of there was it, the the chorus didn't really. Uh, have any distinction which i do agree but i really liked how it sounded like some slaughter type track so five on five fair enough cool all right next up we dead got dead presidents dos i make you and your whack man fold like bad hands roll like monopoly oh yeah we got the nas sample that was stolen apparently and yep. uh, from Don't what be doing I understand, that. Nas is, was not pleased with this. And, and this then, came out in um, 1996. I don't think we mentioned it. June 25th, 1996. The album. Um, yeah, the whole album. And so, um, like, that's, like, around the same time that, like, Illmatic came out. I think it was, like, a year after. Well, Illmatic was a couple of years before, no? 1992. Like, it was earlier. Well, 92 was it? or 93. I thought it was, like, 95 or 94. Yeah, it, was, Anyways. it was a few years earlier. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so anyways, so, like, that's just, I was saying that, you know, it, he was only been out for a couple of years for a very short time, and, like, he was already being sampled on, like, another, like, huge name, but from Brooklyn. So, obviously, he's like, he is representing by, like, taking samples of people mm. who he thinks are good and mostly from Brooklyn. Fair enough. Um, I do think that it, it flowed well, and I felt like, honestly, this just felt like a Nas song the whole way through. Like, yeah. this could have been it on the and, like, you hear Jay-Z's flow, and it, it's the same kind of, like, stream of consciousness. Like, you're right there inside of his head. Like, you're, you're seeing the street corner through his eyes kind of thing. And, and like, like, he hates, you know, people are hating that he's succeeding and doing well. And, like, it's all about, like, making but money. But I feel and... like they're hating on how he's succeeding. I, f- I felt like um, people are hating on Jay-Z not because he's succeeding in, like, the, the, the way that most of these rappers would have. He's doing it calculating so that he always well, it's wins. Like you so can that see that like he, he has interest in like things like investing in real property Diamonds. and cleaning his money. Right. And making sure that he has ways to to not just have it. Like he's not just another rapper. He's right. the kind of guy that really like he, has he, he interest really pre- in changing the scope of he things. He really that, uh, is a yeah. businessman in a sense. Yes, yeah. very much so. And uh, when he, he he does I don't know, I, I just really like this one. I thought this was possibly one of the strongest tracks on the album. You hear his his like voice is just so 
he's just so stoically in control yeah. and he just represents it so powerfully and um i don't know I, I don't really have a lot to like say except that it's a fantastic track that is totally worth hearing and you'll really get some perspective into the the mindset of a broker or jay-z yeah and that he's living the like yeah he's living the good life he's He's real, he's honest, he's thug, He's he is what he says he is, and um, yeah, he's just kind of like singing a song about flossing. Um, I gave this one a four on five. Mm. I liked it, but it was, uh, it was all right. I mean, I, but I enjoyed that it was Nas like featured. I don't know, I gave this a five. I feel like this is a track where from beginning to end it just flows smoothly. There's no flaws in this song. Mm. There's no way to improve this song. It is just amazing. It is. Yeah, amazing. but like if he did steal like the Nas thing, then like that's not good. Be that as it may, and ethics aside behind the scenes, the product of what it's like. Look, if Picasso painted a picture and like stole some shit from somebody and the picture's amazing, as much as it's an asshole move, picture's still, still an awesome picture. And it's tainted. I get that, but still, this is an amazing song. I, get, I could listen to this a lot. Like, if this came on, it would it would get me into a zone. And it, it is would, a good song. And, it, like, it takes you somewhere. It's not a song where you have to be somewhere to hear it. It takes you from yeah. where you were and brings you into another place. So, okay. perfect. No, straight. This song is a five-on-five. Five. It is an amazing track. I like, even, again, I don't really care that he stole the Nas hook. I really like it. It was fucking amazing. Um, it does sound like a Nas song, as Holden said, but in terms of how Jay Z does it, it doesn't sound like Jay Z from the last other from the last three tracks. It doesn't sound anything compared to, um, <clears throat> I guess the the, the gangsterist side. He's kind of just. I feel like he's just more humble on this track in terms of this is what I'm doing. I'm chasing I money. I don't actually see humility in this at all. I see calculation. No, he's like flossing. He's like he's saying not, like how great see, he is. I don't see the braggadocious side that you're seeing either. No, but like he's also saying that well, he's winning see, at games. I don't see bragging. That he is making these calculated moves. I think this moves. is a real G's move in silence kind of thing. Yeah. He alludes to a yes. lot. And he says very little except what you really need to hear. Like he, he has his message. What he's trying to get through is basically this is what you have to be like to get this end results. And you have to have money representing everything to you. If you want to get it, it's fucking crazy. But he also crazy. says that he's rich because of his rap. Yeah. So, mm. I mean, like, because of his talent. So it's like, you, you also have to be talented. But I feel like it's more that the talent is a result of his effort that he's put into yes. it. Yep. And as a Both. result yep. of, like, even his rap is calculation. He is this because he knows it's going to work mm -hmm. as opposed to something else. I, to me, it's really good. I, I, I don't know. I'm totally, uh, I'm totally feeling it. Honestly, I feel like a lot of what we, honestly I feel like a lot of what we just said in like the last uh, song really does apply to this one. Yeah, he's flossing a lot about his successes, how real he is, but he's also trying to show us where his mind's at. You know, like yeah. I really like shit. Like how I think in the third verse of this one is where he's like. All of a sudden, I get high sometimes when I'm stressed. Fuck you, I don't need it. I know it's a contradiction, but, but fuck it, I need knows, it. But he also knows. Also, he's high off of like his well, life. Right. Like he's honestly like high on life because he, like he's succeeding so much and he's getting so much and he's just like loving everything that's going on and, and he's just in control. The whole and that he's just like wow, he's like this is my life and he's just like taking it all in. It's like the whole message is that he's uh, he's come to accept the good vibes that are happening around him and that he's been blessed and he's just going full on feeling whatever is going happen. He's he's still in control. He's still in but control. I, I still feel like it's 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 not so much that he's been bl he's blessed again. I don't think Jay Z believes he's been blessed. No, because he's doing exactly what his mama told him not to be doing, which was to be running the streets. And and um, like that's exactly what he's doing and how he got successful. And I would like to say just even further, it's he he almost shows that he understands there are rules to the game, mm -hmm. and he knows the rules to the game, and the fake fuckers who he attacks on this song don't know the rules to the game. And the difference can be seen between him. He's just trying to establish his realness. I feel like he's feeling it. He's so real that he knows it's all going to work out proper. I mean, it might be a little bit of a corny way to express well, he's it. he's quite cocky and confident. But I think that he also knows that he's got like the intelligence and the means now to be as successful as he wants to be. And that's what well, this like, song is all about. Well, now he's got the means to do more. But I feel like he's also he also presents himself as somebody who's always had... 
a way to find the means That's to it. get something done. And I, I don't like the idea of calling him cocky at this point. No, what point. is that word where you're he's like... confident. He's, he's, con- he's definitely confident, but like, where's that word? Like, like resourceful. He's a very resourceful like, guy. I feel like he recognizes his place in the totem pole, and he's just on a quest, and he knows where he's going to be. And he knows that he's just part of a journey, and you really feel it. I give this a four and a half on five. Frankly, Mecca uh, is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a whole story behind her her feature. Uh, she was like 17 when she did this, and blah blah blah. So you can go Google that after if you have interest. And it sounds like you're in like a jazz club. It's quite nice. Yeah, yeah. and she fits it so flowy, and the beat's really great. Yeah. I mean, it's Feeling just it. mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like it's mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. it's definitely not the same level of power as say Dead Presidents Two would be, but it is definitely like real close. It's still great. Like so far, I'm duly impressed with this four and a half on five. So I stand by that shit. Same. Nice. I also gave it a four and a half on five. It's great. Nice. I gave it a four on five. Um, I thought it was a really good song. It's not bad. It's produced well. Jay Z's again. Uh, I've noticed that he really likes these smooth type of beats. I've mm-hmm. noticed that he 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 knows I how to. I think he's better on them. It's not that he's better, but I feel like he has. I feel like it's a very New York thing, though. It's yeah. where jazz yeah. comes yeah. from. Yeah, that too. Like that you're too. not getting this in Cali. No. You're not getting this Fair. in even fucking Fair. Canada. Fair. This but, is um, like his his culture. It's like you can't be absolutely. like absolutely. And I think like that's a and, he, and he does it well. He does it well. He wants to represent everything about no, I Brooklyn, do agree and that I think that that's part of it. He has an ear for instrumentals where he knows exactly the kind of beat he needs to have to do this type of thing. I've heard some stories over the years of how keen his ear is. He like picture shit and just have it happen and come to life. Apparently, uh, "Dirt Off that's Your not- Shoulder" was a freestyle when he heard the beat. Jesus. And uh, honestly, I, I do agree with you. He has, he has a great ear for these smooth beats, and it's cool. So I gave him a four on five only because it's not something I would really just play a lot. and I wouldn't really go to it, <laughs> to be honest. If it came on the album, yeah, I'm not turning it off, but I'm not going to wake up and be like, play. Yeah, okay. no, but man, the list of songs you would wake up and play by <laughs> now is too big for a morning at this point, so... There's other maybe times of the day, man. Up. Maybe maybe it's a song where, like, after you finish work, you're like, I'm feeling it. There was one song. You if it's a good for day like a work. year, I listened to one song every single morning. It was yes. the first song I listened to. What song? It was "It's a Spadoinkle Day" from Hannibal the Musical. Fair enough. If you want to look that up, <laughs> it's know, a very motivating. Let her know what you think of the song, song eh? Lindell, I look forward to your comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that note, you guys want to talk about the evils? Yes, I do. I so. so the evils is an interesting song talking about how money corrupts. In my right. opinion, I could be wrong. Well, yeah, it's how it he like sold his things. soul to the devil. And I, I feel like he's trying to say that when you do get involved in this money game, especially his version of the money game, and I would like to just take that back, any version of the money game, you have to be ruthless. When you start talking about big figures, people are going to betray you, they're going to oh, get corrupted, hold on, hold on. things are going to change. When you say ruthless, I don't. I, I feel there's two types of ruthless. There's the type of ruthless where it's like... You, the, the type you automatically think when you hear the word, they're in your face, they're punching you, they're ready to come at you, they'll, they'll, sl- they'll slice you, right? But I feel like Jay-Z's got a type of ruthlessness to him where it's like, he, he's got this power of, like, respect. That well, If you were to ask me, the guys who are up in your face punching you aren't ruthless. The guys who don't say anything and destroy you are ruthless. Ooh. And Jay Z is proving that he's one of like this is who you have to be to play in this game because the guy who is in your face punching the soldier on the ground, he's the first one getting clipped. You don't actually survive, you know. And I think he's trying to establish that he recognizes the evil because like he's talked a lot about the flossing and the good side of money and right. all the victories and stuff and how he's craving it. But now he's going and flipping the coin on you and saying. You know, I have all that crazy shit going on, right? But then on the other hand, here's the other side of the coin that it drops and it presents just, you know, I, I think it's just a good, like, for the love of money is the root of all evil, metamorphized into a really dope song with smooth ass fucking flows again. The beat does get under my skin just a little bit by the end. So for me, this is a four. It is not the best song, but I could listen to this because it's so message driven and, like, yeah. I really respect the fact that Jay Z is willing to take multiple lenses of a subject. Really, like this whole album's kind of about making money, 
but mm-hmm. he, he does so many specific lenses, like a photographer taking an image and putting it under different things, so using like different filters. Instagram filters yeah. and yeah. shit. And I like the one that he did here because it just shows his honesty and it almost validates his realness just a little bit more because so often you hear a bunch of shit, but nobody really talks about the fact that when you do get money, it corrupts your soul. You know, they're not hearing that. Well, that, well, that's what he's saying in this, when he says that he fully accepts his sins and that he's not asking for forgiveness, that he's given up on all that hope, that he's sold his soul to the devil. And, like, that's an interesting way that, you know, that's a different way than a lot of other rappers, not all of them, but some of them, Whoa. choose to go a little bit more towards the Bible. And for him, he's kind of like, I know I've fucked up. Uh, sorry. Um, and, like, but he's not trying to be forgiven for it. He's just kind of like, I'm dealing with it. Like, this is it. Like, I'm, I'm a gonna, bad guy, and this is just like my life. He really has that, like, live fast, die young mentality drilled yeah. into his mind. So yeah. he is going to live to the fullest. But he does talk about using, learning how to use condoms, which is, like, really interesting. I mean, obviously, it was, like, the, you know, the 80s and the 90s is when condoms were, like, becoming a lot more normal. Right. And, like, people were using them. And, like, the, you know, the reasons behind why we were suddenly using all condoms um, and so, I mean, you must have loved that. You love it when people talk about condom well, use. I and, find like... it interesting because Jay-Z does bring up, I think it was either the baby that he now has a baby mother that they have to deal with, the guy who didn't use the rubber. Yeah, and, and he so says learning how to saying. use a condom. And then, like, I mean, it, it, it's just showing that there are consequences that you may not be aware of later on if you don't put it on. And then I was just thinking, Meek Mill dropped this line on the last album where he's like, I'm a fucking raw. And I'm like, you're still doing that shit to be cool? Well, well he also does say right after because he's going to force her to get the plan B. Right, yeah, but, but the point is not... is that doesn't really take care of the diseases or the right. fact that plan B's success rate is 50% in a best case scenario. Oh. I digress. Those aren't really the relevant topics here. Well, anyways, I gave this song a 4.5 on 5. I really liked it. I thought it was a great song about like the moral struggle uh, and like about greed and like you know, like just this is his life and like this is what he's committed to. Um, and it's a little bit about peer pressure, I guess, because, you know, he's obviously done this for a reason, but I think it's more like his internal struggle that more than anything else. Fair enough. I actually gave it a five on five. I just really love his honesty about how he, and how he depicts how money changes you and how he just, he wants to do good in a way, but at the same time, he's also accepting that shit's got to be done before I can get to where I got to go. All right. Right. Maybe you'll need 22 twos. See rendition. Too many rough motherfuckers. I got my suspicion that you're just fishing a pool of shit. So we start off with the lady who's hosting the event being all like, yo, Jay-Z's in the house. Come up here. And you get the feeling that it's like one of those. Like an open mic or something. Yeah, but yeah. Like one of those local spots that builds people where it's not like everybody comes up open mic. You got to be legit. So it's like showcasing artists that are on the rise and shit like that so yeah. let's say like not just any old person mid-tier artist and it's like yo jc i got your tape we know you the up and coming guy get up you and spit some shit and he's like all right and then can i kick it yes, yes i can, can. And which is fun because everybody likes tribe and then he just drops into this insane verse where and he does 22 two verses and where he just, changes it every two verses. So he's changing his flow, but that he's also sense. like dropping it like too many people do too many sets of problems. And so he's really just playing up on this. Like and I like it when people do that, right? When you create a whole verse under a cheeky little theme like that, but pull it off so well while expressing this point that basically there's too many fake fuckers out there behaving incorrectly. Well, it's a right. song about people like he's just calling everyone on their shit, basically. Like he's, he's just saying like, stop sucking up to like these West Coast rappers um, you know, like everyone's switching it up and nobody wants to be real. Like, yeah. And then you got the little chorus, the second verse, and then there's the outro part where with another little yeah. skit. She's like, whatever. And she then gets really mad. Like, then she's like, do I smell reefer in here? And then somebody yeah. tells her to shut the fuck up and she kicks him out. And then like the crux of that is that's why we can't have nice things because we be, don't know how to behave in public. We take, we get offered one thing and then we try to have it an extra mile and i mean yeah. it's insane i mean like it, it is like i have to admit the skip part i don't want to listen to it every time even if it's got a great Fair message enough. but it's still a fucking near perfect song to me four and a half on five i was really blown away by just the technique by the sounds of the beat it was really nice it made me picture some wu-tang vibes yeah and in general it's one of the nicer messages on the album 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I give it a four on four on five. I thought it was good. It wasn't my favorite one that was on this album, but um, I like the rawness of it and just like how he just kind of comes out and be like, okay, here I am, and like he just goes like straight and hard, and it's great. Nice. I give it a four on five just because I have I hate the fact that I have to skip over the skits to get to like. To yeah. Do that. I wouldn't. You could just I wouldn't. listen to it. Mm-hmm. You could just listen to it. I could, but it's not one of those songs that I want to listen to these type of skits for. That's fair. Okay. Well, can I live? Nope. The respect for authority, laughing hard, happy to be escaping poverty. I like this jam. Do you know? Yeah. It's kind of it, slow. But it's Jay Z kind of presenting this. This like it, it's almost like he's getting criticized for the way he's living his life, right? Right. But he's living his life in a way to be like this flamboyant entertainer type and he he has all this money and he's doing all the things he's supposed to do he's buying all the wealthy shit right he's doing it right and he's he's uh buying all his new cars and shit making fun of people who don't lease which fun fact he retracted that statement in 2006 and said you shouldn't actually buy a car something that loses value as soon as you buy it leasing it's actually a better value moving on and it's just the way he puts it down. It's like knowledge for days. It's like one of the wisest tracks here, but almost asking like, like almost satirically, oh, can I live? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. How are you going to criticize me? How are you going to judge me? I'm doing all of this. And then almost selling it right at the end by isolating the fact that black people are almost expected to be these entertaining buffoons of society. And so what the fuck can you expect? He's doing exactly what you asked of him and he's winning and now you're mad at him. And the way he just presents it over this amazingly smooth beat the, the, yeah. I know he's slower, and maybe it's, it's not quite slow. And I've come but to really appreciate talented slow rap, and the way he did this was so he, good. He ha- like we like we said a couple tracks earlier. He does have this crazy ear for these type of melodic beats, and he knows how to control the verses that he does. And and I know I say this a lot uh, throughout the episode, but it's just when he tells a story, he tells a story. And now I feel like he's sitting there trying to like somewhat beg the people to get the fuck off and leave them alone but at the same time he's trying to make them well, understand like this is what I gotta go through while yeah. you want I me to like do I feel like it's a way of, of also trying to say get assets that develop wealth and if you have yeah. that that's the difference That's and that's what's pissing people off is now that he's got these assets and he's showing that instead of he's just not, wasting not his the money he's joke he was anymore. like instead of going to the strip club he's buying expensive houses and shit right yeah. I, I don't know if those are the examples I'm just creating what well, I'm trying to express well he's basically saying like you know, how he got to where he is now with, like, a lot of money was that he ha- he had nothing to lose. And so he was doing anything that he could to make money. And that he was, you know, hustling out of helplessness, I think is one of his lines. And, like, it's, you know, it's crazy. It's like, but he got there. And he, you know, he is, he's in this powerful, rich position. And, you know, he did anything that he could to, to get there. And I don't know. It, the song was too slow for me. I guess it's a five. I know you did. It was I, so powerful. This I, is a great song, Bonnie. Like, this is a five. For me, like, I got, like, the message and everything else, it's but it was so too. boring. I could like, just picture is, you walking yeah. up the streets. Uh, dun, dun, yeah. Dun, with that not beat. this one. This is oh, not a morning sure. song for me. This well, is it's not, not a morning, morning song. song. As, <laughs> as is Holden a... requested, it's a Thursday afternoon song. Oh, Once you've had a bad a... day at work and you're like, can I just live? Can this I just is do like me? when you get out of that's work true. and when I'm biking home and I'm just feeling it. And, you know, that's a good track. Like this, can I live not feeling it? This is this is what I was going for. I, I really enjoyed this. Perfect. I gave it a three. So. Oh, I like go votes. I was just bored. I'm sorry. And what did you give it, Chris? I gave it a five, bro. I get it. Straight. Like, it's an amazing track. You can't you can't listen to this and, and not feel what he feels and not understand what he's trying to make you understand. Like, it's straightforward. He's explaining everything, lays it down, crazy fucking flow. Like, just what he five said. Five. What he's trying to say is there ain't no person like the one I got. Since you've been playing with Bobby and Kenny, you can't change a player's game in the ninth inning. The here we have a fun tale of the gold digger, the the gold digging seat. Oh, kind of not a gold digger. So Jay Z has a, this relationship with this lady. It's a platonic where he, relationship. It's not a platonic relationship. There is definitely sex and emotions involved. And, Here we uh, meet Foxy Brown. She's then, featured. And then uh, Jay Z is kind of with her, but he also fucks around. But he also kind of gives he her gives everything her she lots wants. Of, lots of money. Lots of money. And flossing fancy things. shit. So Expensive the trade-off seems to be that she'll hold him down. 
and he can fuck whoever he wants as long as the paper is right. So it's kind of gold diggery, but it seems to be it's a little kind of more than also... that. But he also accepts this. Well, he's they totally both fine do. with it. He's kind of laying it down, and this is who I am. I'm just being fucking honest with you. I, and he even like makes comments like, "I'm gonna try and be monogamous." Because he's bragging then, that he gets know, all these girls. The hoes are gonna come around. But then Foxy comes in and just kind of validates the entire thing. Like he he tells her, "Don't be jealous of your friends. They're just talking shit." And she's like, "I know they're talking shit. The man I got is special, and the thing we have is because they're all like, why are you with him and stuff.' And, and then and everyone's favorite she part. It. Ha 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 ha! He's got he's got a memorable <laughs> laugh. Like you can't ever forget it. It's just that that line is hilarious. Yeah. Um, I think this song is fantastic. Foxy raps fucking proper. That yeah, was she an does. excellent verse, and she counters it well. Oh, like she I, sounds so cool and like seventies, but like gangster. She's and representing. It's... She's she stands up representing exactly what Jay Z represents in this well, track. I feel like it's kind of like this entire song is Jay Z's fantasy. Like, this right, is who he wants to right. be. This is what he well, wants he to have out of life. About, like, that there's so many girls that he has to, like, sleep with that he only has, like, eight seconds to, like, be in each girl. And, like, he has to, you Yes, know. he does it. And then if we and remember... And he says, he's like, I'm not embarrassed by the fact that I only do that in eight seconds. He's like, because I've got all these girls to do. I don't have time and energy to invest in everyone. That's it. He doesn't... He's just got no time I'm like, much. okay. To excuse be fair, me, Mr. Greedy Pants. Apparently, Mr. JFK was a very busy man himself, the president... Maryland. And he, he would only last for like two, three minutes, and that's all he had time for. So I'm just saying, it, it's just the, the executive type seems to come quicker, is what we're learning from these Down stories. Down to business in every sense. And, and Jay-Z even follows this up. He's uh, he's the guest verse on Missy Elliott's uh, One Minute Man, and he's just saying, I ain't trying to give you hours of affection. I'm just trying to give you 60 seconds of perfection. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's not fake, dude. I remember being a teenager being like, did he just say what I think he did? <laughs> yep. And I think many of us had that moment. But uh, I think it's fantastic. This track is a perfect vibe. That beat, fire. That's that's like three of those little fires with the red 100. <laughs> that's what I feel about this beat. I feel both their performances are stellar. You may not ideologically agree with the relationship they're putting forward, but I have so much admiration and respect for the honesty behind the relationship they're putting forward. That's I don't true. think there's an actual problem with the relationship they're putting forward. Just a little. Just She's a just little like an thing. open relationship. You know what yeah. I kind of realized? This is a the one-sided type of, open relationship. But you know what this is? This is the type of relationship every fucking person wants to have in today's 2017 society. Oh, no. Uh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. There is a vast majority of people that I see in my city and that I work with and just all this shit. And there is people who just, they're okay with, yes. This. Well, maybe just because it's I just would say it's more, more of a 50-50 split than most people. Like, there is still a significant number of people who that don't are, feel it's appropriate yes. to <laughs> like this. In fact, I'd be leaning that on the public face, not what people actually believe. Most people will publicly say they're not down for this. And fair. a lot yeah, more fair. people behind closed doors are kind of down for this shit than they would like to admit. But I, I do think it's a bold song. I like the honesty because if you think about it, a, communication, a, a relationship is based on communication. And effectively, they're communicating their desires and expectations at each other in this song. So if anything, Jay-Z is giving you solid relationship advice in this strange song. I guess so, yeah. Yep. yep. Um, I gave it a four on five. I liked it. I thought it sounded funky, but like, I don't know. Like it was, maybe it was the message behind it or something. Something was off for me. That's okay. I gave this a five on five. Foxy Brown stood right, for me, stood right up against with Jay-Z. I was like, dude, her rhyming is on point. Her flow is nice. Jay-Z's fucking doing it right. This is a great song. Five on five. Okay. So um, then I guess we get to move on to a fun track. A super fun yep. track, friend, friend or, or foe. foe. Dances, let me guess. They said it was money round here, and the rest is me stopping you from getting. This is a DMX song. Yep. Um, I mean, obviously it's Jay Z, and if I'm not mistaken, this even came out before DMX dropped his shit. So, I'm not trying to imply anyone stole anything, but. Do you hear this song and there's a little skit at the beginning where clearly some shit's about to happen and then Jay-Z ends up talking to this person. And it's just this very one-sided conversation and the way he spits his rhymes with that... And I don't believe it, but I'm gonna hear you, and I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna. It's like a conversation. It's like a Jay Z. I mean, a DMX song. But it's like he's like giving a speech to someone, but it's in like a rap 
like tone and like the way he's like presenting it. But his inflections are just so but up and down. It's so erratic. It's, yeah, but it's you pretty know cool. What? I like how he plays, and and I got this like two sided. Um, I'm not trying to say two faced. I don't think Jay Z's. Well, he's very manipulative. But I'm saying yes. there's this. There, I, like the he plays off the title friend and foe. At first, you get this sense that he's being a friend with this guy, or he's trying to be friendly with him. But then, throughout the speech he's giving, and throughout the like the, the warning, well, it it's sounds more like, like a it warning. was someone that was a friend of his who like kind of like backstabbed him or like screwed him over right. in some way, right? Right. I, right. I don't. I don't know about that. I think that it's some stranger who just started operating on the block, and Jay Z well, kind of brings him into the room, and he <clears throat> he lulls him into a false sense of security by being friendly at the beginning of the song. Oh, maybe. So he approaches him like, "I'm a friend. Come in. You can come here." And then about halfway through, it flips. And he's like, but here's the thing. I'm really not your friend. And now that you're here, here's what's going to happen. Basically, you're going to get the fuck out. You're never going to operate. And you're going to leave me all that shit because, well, you owe me anyways. And if you never come back around here again, you will not die. And Yay. so that's kind of what I got from the title. Like he, it's, it's a way, it's almost like a, a power move of how to approach a situation. And I he's showing that. you... How, it's He's almost definitely like, in charge. It's like a behind the scenes of how Jay Z would handle this type of situation, put into rap That's form. True. But it just That's goes a to good show way you. To put it. But you know what? It just goes to show you, and I do like what he did here. He doesn't need to, he doesn't need to physically touch you or hurt you or anything. He just needs to speak with you, and I think that he's scary enough just with his words. I think that's what that's what lacks in a lot of uh, today's arguments and a lot of today's fucking bullshit problems. Everybody's swinging first and shooting first and all that stuff. But well, nobody's it's, really... it's interesting that you say that because most people cuss and get loud. And what you'll notice is he doesn't really swear on this song. No, he might he doesn't. maybe mildly. I, I didn't really notice it. And he stays he calm the whole way through. He's more or less just having a conversation. And if you look at master debaters and the guys who really know mm -hmm. how to argue, the real manipulation masters, they don't raise their voice and they don't swear when they're in those moments or they don't swear at people. They stay calm and it That's just true. shows, again, his CEO level of thinking. If you can have that of kind of control in that kind of like moment. I give it a four. It's not yep. the best song on the album. It's, it's a really cool enough. one. It's really interesting, but it, it's more of an experience to me than a song and I would definitely skip over this more often than I would listen to it with while still respecting what it is. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but hear DMX the whole way through it. Fair enough. Cool. Um, I also gave it a four. I also thought it was like an interesting song, like interesting song and like concept, like the way that he performed it. Um, yeah, I thought it was cool, but maybe not an everyday kind of song. Nice. I also gave it a four on five. I just thought it was a little short. I was I was hoping there was like another verse too that something happens. The mat because when you uh, there is a music video to this and it does play out the same way that we all kind of think it does. Some guys new on the block. He's with his homies. Uh, uh, they leave the uh, the hotel room. They come back. They get into the truck. Jay Z lock like kind of just shows up with his friends. He's kind of just like talking to the guy in the truck. Um, and then at the end of it, he goes, "I don't ever, ever, ever want to see you come back here again." And then the beat drops. <clears throat> and then there's a continuation of the video. I think another song comes in. I didn't really catch on to the background music, but the guys do come back to the hotel room. There's a whole big problem. They end up getting shot and blah blah blah. So there is an actual like music video story to this. But the song's short. Like, when you yeah, see that... It's a skit, kind no, of. No, I, I know, I know. But when you see that, and then I got to this, I was just like... Uh, I was kind of yeah, hoping but... that there was a story of, like, if, if something did happen, of an explanation. I don't know. I don't think that elongating this would have helped. I think that sometimes the thing runs its course. What, what else could this have How long is it, like, really a gone? minute... Minute 48 or something yeah, like right. that. Yeah. And the thing is, though, is as much as you're saying that, it's more to leave it open-ended. I, I think that if he comes back... And he gets shot out. Yeah, for a it's music video. It's a question. Video. It's like, is he a friend or is he a foe? But it's also like, for a music video, sure, it shows how hard Jay-Z is. But I also think it takes something away from what the song is. Okay. I think that oftentimes the problem with music videos is that you're going, oh, I like the music video more, so the song needs more. But nah, if you really, how could he add it to this? Then he goes in verse two, oh, and you came back, so now I have to fuck you up. Well, now the song loses a lot of the cool psychological boss shit of it. I see it. that. I see and instead, that. And instead, now he's giving you an example of how to handle the situation. There doesn't need to be a situation in this song. It's almost, to me, more the point. Fair enough. Maybe you need a coming of age. Yeah. This was cool um, in terms of the message, the concept, 
and what they're trying to express and saying. What are they trying to express and say? So the song is called Coming of Age, and I feel, and what I got from it is that they're both sharing their wisdom of what they know now, uh, now where they are, how they got here, the experiences, the lessons, and just certain like little tips and tricks on how to get by on certain subjects. Well, I think, I feel like I feel you're like a little you're, bit wrong there. I have to agree, because <laughs> Jay-Z is like the old mentor type. Yeah, I think that Memphis like, Bleak like his is protege. like the young guy. And well, you're right in the sense that Jay-Z is doing that. He's coaching him on like what to do and what and not to do. It's okay. like Memphis is kind of coming in and being like, well, this is my perspective. This is where I'm at with this situation. And Jay-Z's like, I'm going to be your, your uncle. It's and he's like, like I want to be just like you. He's like, how do I get it's to be like, like you? It's kind of like the younger gangster wanting to, to talking with the older gangster. Well, no, that's not kind of like. That's it's exactly. literally exactly <laughs> what this is. Literally. I mean, it's basically a coming of age track. It's saying Jay-Z's like, all right, I'm here. I've been on the block for a minute. Y'all know who I am. This is the next guy, and it, it's he's, that, he's that's like he's the in whole training. Track. The only thing I didn't like about this track though was that like, like that. The beat was good, uh, but then it, it did get annoying. It was a very repetitive, and, uh, and by the end of it, I was like, okay. If this I can was... tell you that in like good headphones, it's not so bad, but on my like speakers in this room, it's pretty like overbearing this bass sound. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I'm not a huge fan of the bassiness. Um, you know what? I like the song for what it is. But, like, if I were to, like, think of this album, it's not even in the first five songs I would think of. Because, really, there's a lot more interesting stuff. I do appreciate it again. It's kind of like Jay-Z saying, and when you finally made it, pay it forward. Take somebody under your wing. Get the education on. Teach them your ways. So I appreciate it. But it's a four on five. It's not truly an excellent song. It's just really good. Both are talented. Um, Memphis sounds cool. Um, yeah, he I, is really good. Stand up. He definitely works well next to Jay Z, and they have a good chemistry. But it's not it's not like the same kind of chemistry as Biggie and had with him, which makes sense because of the statures and stuff. But but it's like they were like peers, and like this is like you know obviously like his, yeah, you know he's training him. So I, I like student. It. It's an okay song. I yeah, know. I give it a four on five. Um, I mean overall, it's basically just about like the cycle of gangsters and like you know the next generation you know i guess so i thought it was interesting it was cute fair enough i give it a four and five solely because that beat repetitive thing it just annoyed the crap out of me by the end of it and i was like i look everything else of it was great memphis bleak has a really great voice really great verse stands up well with jay-z but just that that i I can't listen to it knowing that i just i can time it when it's gonna come and it just bothers the hell out of me there you go. It's, like, it, it's, it's kind of like a it, shark. Yeah, it's that's it. Is it giving you cashmere thoughts? It is no. totally giving me cashmere Not thoughts. Cashmere thoughts. Mm-hmm. When your hoes try to corner bro, as if you didn't know, Jay's about getting dough spitting. Delightful. This is a nice thing. Um, I liked, I liked one. I liked something Henny did. I liked on how when he when he said cold, he actually it actually sounded and he dropped his voice as if he was actually like becoming colder. Like that's outside the theatrical the side of Jay Z. And I really yeah, really yeah. like that because nowadays when people use the word cold, I feel like they're using it in like a hard raw sense to explain how like or, broken they are. Or they go, burp, burp. or that too, because you know it's so burr in here and it's freezing. Uh, but I, I just wanted to point out that that was really really cool. Um, the, the, the flow is, is again, he, he knows how to create this, this presentation uh, of just I feel there. like you're underselling how good this is. I feel oh, like really? oh, this is one of the most impressive verses, especially in making things rhyme in coming up with like mid sentence chopping of his flows. And like, yes, if you were to read it like an essay and then look at where the periods and the sentences are compared to where the rhymes are. Most rappers, periods and commas, would line up with their rhyming. So it'd be like, I'm walking down the street, somebody that I meet. And Jay-Z's like, just fucks it all up. So it's like, I'm walking walking down the the street, down a kind of... And then he just like fucks up the whole like grammar of his verse to make it next level. On top of that, he's just sitting here laying down the things that motivate him and the, the level and the scope of his dreams. So the cashmere thoughts that he has and it's... All the fancy ass rich living shit that he wants to do, but he delivers it so smoothly. And again, that ear for his beats, that beat that he picked, it was just like snug like a bug in a rug. And I think this is one of the best verses on the entire album. I think that from a rapping perspective, like to learn how to be a better rapper, 
this is an interesting fucking verse. And then the second verse too. But that first verse is just, it's cra- it keeps going, it keeps flowing, and it never gets boring to me. I give this song a clear and straight five. This might be... Wow. I don't know. I'm torn between this and Dead Presidents too no, this, as this, my this favorite is a song really, on the album. Really good song. This is a really really good song. Um, I'm, I might call this. You my know what's you know what's funny. Favorite. You know what's funny. It's I, I find it very funny how you are torn between Dead Presidents and this song, because to me, they're both initially saying the same thing, just in two different ways. See, I feel like hold on, hold on. I feel like Dead Presidents. He's making it very clear that he's chasing money, that he's chasing after goals and dreams. Mm-hmm. But Cashmere Thoughts, he's kind of explaining why he's doing it i want the silk robe i want the i I want the dead president but i'm like it's it's kind of the same shit you're still chasing after money you're still chasing after riches but but i don't think it's the same thing i think dead presidents too is more like this is the way life is when you're chasing money these are the consequences of life and cashmere thoughts is jay-z sitting there he just smoked up his blunt he lay back in the chair he went like this he started dreaming. Sounds like one of my walks. And this is, but yeah, he's on a walk. <laughs> and that's it. This is like a, a, a lucid daydream of fantasies of what motivates Jay-Z to get through the day. That's why it's so, like, maybe he's, like being knocking gangster, off the stuff giving in his women house. bad ideas. Maybe he's just, like, knocking off the stuff in his house. I, I don't think maybe. that's it. I think it was more the stuff he would like to have in his house. Well, anyway, I love this track. And the beat's amazing. And it's so well produced. And it's so perfect. Oh. Oh, I maybe mean. I don't know. Maybe you guys, because you're rappers, you guys felt differently about this song. But at this point in this album, like I was bored. Um, I didn't really find that this song was that great. Like it was good, but it was already kind of like too much of the same thing. And I don't know. I so, gave it a three. I'm sorry. It's just you gotta listen to sometimes. Focus sometimes on just how he rhymes things. How when he because he really makes words that shouldn't rhyme rhyme here. I don't have any good examples, but. I was super impressed by like the Eminem styled flow he was like delivering with his skill for rhyming. It, it was truly divine, and that that to me is like from more of the rapping side of it where it gets like better. And I, I don't know. I mean, as, as just like look at it from like a literary essay and how fucked up he made that flow. I, that's how. I, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I'm being redundant now. I guess you can say that with this emotional overflow I have. We should bring, bring it, it on. on. Fuck with pistols just to see my shit discharge pus. I dropped a Stella even now. There had to be the track that brings on some squad. Yeah, and, so is that uh, Jazzo and Sauce Money. Or Big Jazz, depending on the place you look. I guess his name is Fat Joe, who was also sampled. Well, Fat Joe is a separate person mm-hmm. who's very good. He was sampled on the hook. And if I understand correctly, everybody who's making some cash, everybody some here cream. making some cheddar. Yeah. Um... Fairly speaking, everybody stood next to Jay-Z properly. Like, nobody sounded bad on this song. But at the same time, I feel like it wasn't also as insightful or interesting as some of the it other was songs more were. Of a, it was more of a braggy type track, I feel. I feel like they were kind of just opening up and saying, like, look, we're going for it. We got the money. This is what we're doing. We in. Like, it wasn't really about how or what they're planning on doing with it, except for just... This is what we got. Yeah. But it's but you know what? It is a squad track though. He brought people from the squad. He brought his friends on. So in terms of like I kinda I kinda understand. Like in terms of what Jay Z himself individually is trying to do, and then having like a squad track, you'll generally make these type of songs when you have your squad on. Because everybody can kind of relate as well, I feel. Again, I think the only one here who is really fitting the motif of the album, though, is Jay-Z. Because Jay-Z presents it again, Think Bigger. That seems to be the general theme of this album, is think bigger, stay focused. Right. These other guys were more of the typical style of bragging about having the money and stuff. And that kind of, like, it was really, like, there's no reason I should dislike this song at all. Like, there should be no problem with it. It's as technically good as any of the others and stuff, but the spirit and the soul of it just doesn't feel like it's as much there. Like, it's all about them just talking about how they want money and how they're so, like, gangster and, like, they're drug dealers and, like, all this stuff. And for me, like, I just found that it was, like, so repetitive, like, in the sense that, like, I've heard this so many times now that it's repetitive. And, like, like I get that you have to, like, do, like, your crew shout out and whatever. And it... But, like, it wasn't that great. It wasn't that original. I didn't enjoy the beat. Um, and... Yeah, like, I don't know. This song didn't stand out for me other than being not the best song. I give it a four because I feel like, objectively speaking, it's pretty good for what it is. I've heard some of the like, crew the songs that are bad. Like, the rap is still good, but, like, I just 
But like, I would you know never seems, put this you know back on. Like, I think it's like it just doesn't fit on the album. Yes, it. That's what it is. <clears throat> it's a good song, single wise. If it came out like that, good yeah. to promote the album. Good. But to get hype, okay. I don't know. I, 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 yeah, that makes a lot of I sense. I feel like it's kind of like a filler track. I mean, I'm sorry. But I'm going to stick with the whole squad track. He brought his squad on, and instead of making it like, guys, we yeah, have to get like... squad track is a filler track. Not all the time. I've never heard a squad track that really didn't feel like a... They all kind of feel like fillers. They all kind of feel like they don't belong okay. on the project. Like sometimes okay. it's like, yeah, they're better than others, but they're still the same thing. Like, they I are like, what they are. And it's never like the guys who are jumping on in this era necessarily represent the same vision with the exception of something like a Wu-Tang Clan. And so in, in most cases, it's like the guys jump on and just do their thing on the verse, which doesn't always coincide. Like, Jay-Z has a thing. And these next two sound good in terms of as rappers, but nah. It's I it's I, I don't know. I still gave it a four. Still think it's a good song. It's just a little disappointing on this album. Fair enough. Four on five. I gave it a two point five. Sorry folks. <sighs> it was Christ. not it was not good for me. <laughs> You're gonna definitely have some regrets over uh, that one. Yeah. Nope. I think this song best shows that Jay Z's in charge and he's the boss. Um, I've been reading a few books that kind of like il illustrate just how CEOs think, how power is constructed, etc. And one of the things is learning how to handle mistakes, learning how to deal with the consequences of things, and moving along. And the, basically, this song is Jay Z's number one rule. You're going to do things. In order to survive, you're going to have to live with regrets. And uh, he illustrates that just in the people he's had to kill, who people... The bad things that he's done. He's sold every mm. type of drug. He's tried talking to God There's about no all of this. There's no honesty on like, this track. Still, it's, but it's a you matter know, the of... the streets call him. He just keeps going but back. it's just knowing that when you have to do the really, really hard things, and you have to come at it like... When you do have to do things like hurt They're people you love... And you have to cut things out. And when somebody crosses you, deal like all the regrets you're going to accomplish along the way. If you can't learn to manage them and then do what you need to do and continue to live that hard life, you're never going to succeed. And it's almost like this is the secret to Jay-Z's power is that he doesn't regret things. He knows how to live with them, remember them, learn from them, and move on. So you don't want to like get on his bad side, I guess. Well, it's not about getting on his bad side. I mean, he is, he is going to protect himself and stand up for what he believes in. But... I like the honesty in terms of he's like, look, if you're going to do this, this is what you got to do. And again, he doesn't, he's not bragging about it, right? It's not a song to be bragging no. about. No, this is the opposite. He's almost like saying, you guys have no idea how heavy yeah. the crown weighs. It's like yeah. more of a realization. He wants people to realize, like, look, as much as like we talk about this type of shit and we do this type of shit, like this is how fucking difficult this type of shit is. Like, he's like, and there are bad things that you're going to have to do. And, like, you're going to have to live with that. I so honestly think, think that it. this track, like, a lot of people nowadays should still listen to this track, Regrets, because, like, some people really think that they could make it in this type of world and think that they could do what these guys can do. And I, I feel like if they were to listen to this song, I, I think they would kind of realize, like, yo, you can't live with the regret. You well, can't that's live what with Jay -Z, these. I don't know that it's so much saying you can't do it. It's saying if you're, you're gonna going have to, to do, do it, it be prepared right. for it. Know what you're getting yourself into because I'm certain that Jay-Z's encountered a lot of people who are like, oh, I didn't know it was going to be like that. I didn't realize. I was unaware. You know, the guy that he has to shoot now probably yeah. is that person who couldn't live with his regrets. So, right. I, I, for me, this is a four and a half on five. It is so fucking close to perfect, but that chorus sounds exactly like the verses. And so, it, I mean, yeah, the words are different and the flow's a little bit different, but it's just so similar that... The song kind of blends into almost five minutes of constant Jay-Z, which is almost perfect. It's really good on this song, but I kind of wish there for a little no bit like of a break, break yeah. somewhere yeah. in it. Yeah. It's long. It feels long. I gave it a four on five. Um, it is very raw and very honest and very truthful as to like what he has done and what he is willing to do in order to survive. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's what, all it is. So yeah, that's it. Four on five. Yeah, I give it a four or five as well. I just, I don't see any distinction throughout the entire song. It's just one big mashup. Granted, I did like the other one that was on this on this album. 
where it sounded like there was no distinction as well, but that song had a certain context to it that I felt was mm-hmm. okay like that. I feel like this was the only one of its kind that took on this bleak subject. Well, no, you uh, you, you mentioned it earlier on a track. Uh, there was no distinction, and, and it was like kind of like a slaughter type. Uh, it's the Biggie track. Oh, I know It's what the you're Biggie saying. track with Jay-Z. The um, okay, there was no distinction saying. in the chorus, and I did like That's that true. track, but I liked how Biggie and... For me, on that track, Biggie gave me that break from Jay, and it's okay. like the, how they went back and forth. Here, it was just straight Jay, and there was no change. And a, so. a fun fact, this is the actual end of the album, and then it was the re-released version that has the next track on it. Which is, Can I Live 2? This one was really cool. It kind of follows uh, in line with the Can I Live one song of just describing the kind of stuff they have to do, the realities. And one line in particular really, really struck with me where Jay Z goes, Yeah, I sold drugs for a living. That's a given. Why is it? Why don't y'all visit the neighborhoods I lived in? And it, it's just like, hmm. Again, he's going a little political with it. He's going and saying, look, I've done all these things that I have to do. I've gone and had to approach all of these situations, but like you guys are, are not even aware of my reality as That's you're true. judging, as you're making your comments, as you're criticizing the fact that I got my start as a drug dealer. Because that shit's stigmatized. I mean, look at the show Empire. Oh, they started their empire on drug money. Everybody cares about where your money initially comes from. Guess what? That's what you what? gotta do to survive, though. All those super JFK guys that you guys all love it comes from prohibition money. It's the fucking difference, is all I'm trying to say. Yeah. But um, I, I think that a clear distinction of this song worth noting is that given that it's a year later, the quality and engineering work and beat and everything is a yes. tier above yes. the rest of this album, and it's so visible. Um, I love this song. Like, right away, like, I was like, oh, this is more up-tempo. It sounds better. Like, it just... I like the beat right away. Everything about it was good. Um, it's just, it is just explaining like his life, his hood, what's going on, and like the things that he's had to do. And like I thought it was like fun and kind of quirky, and like he's kind of being funny and he's like talking about his neighbors, mm-hmm. um, and like who's around him. And it's just like the like the regular people that he sees, and he's just kind of like shouting out, like the people who are there every day. The pro, you know, the ones he walks by, and he's like, oh hi, good morning. Probably the same people and. Like, just how ghetto everyone is and, like, how totally cool everyone is with everyone. And then and Memphis kind of responds to him for a minute, and then he yeah. responds back. Yeah. I don't know. I really like the song. I was like, oh, finally. Like, there was, like, a few songs that were kind of, like, mm, for me. And so then we, we got this one, and I gave this one a 5 on 5. I really liked it. Hmm. It is a 4. I gave this a 4 on 5 solely because I felt like it was, like, an amped up remix version to the first Can I Live, uh, personally, for me. Two, I like how it was... <clears throat> um, more. But you can't like not 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 nod your head to this. Like song. no, of course, because so it's, it's it's produced better, it's mixed better, everything's more revamped, which is why it's a good track. But, but it, in terms of what it really is, it's kind of just like okay, it's a this little is blender. This yeah, it's the same shit he said it's on Can I Live like, One, just in a different way. It's almost like you're right. The sillier side of things makes me almost take that point off a little more. No, that's what I liked about it. Was I that like you got you to see like a different it. side of him? It wasn't just like. Oh, the same old, like, ooh, I'm thug, I'm gangster, I'm real, blah, 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 blah. Like, Fair can enough. I live one but got a five uh, Okay, five so here's an that. example. We went from the humble Jay-Z, and then all of a sudden his arrogance has creeped in a little bit you know, more. You know maybe, what it felt like? You feel his you know richness what it felt like? is You know endless. what it felt like? It felt more like... We went from going "Can I Live" as a serious topic to "Can I Live" to I turning care it about to the exact name being as equal. I, I mean, for me, it's more like Jay Z sounds like he's already made it a lot more here, and he sounds a little more cocky, less confident, more cocky. And you know what? A lot of okay. people love that about him. It's kind of what turned me off of Jay Z in the first place. So I, I could tell that that was there, and I don't know. Four on five. Fair enough. Um. So you guys wanted to do you say everything? Yeah, I yeah. guess so. The album ending. Um, what did you give the album? Well, my total album score on this one was a four point six on five. I liked the album in general. I like Jay Z. He really did impress me. Um, again, I never really followed him throughout his career. Uh, I like the flows. I like the quickness that he does. I like the features on it. It's a really good album. Just, I don't think I'd really go back to it in terms of something that I would want to listen to. But I do suggest that everybody does take a second to listen to this album and really... I understand who Jay-Z is, where he came from. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I like this. It was okay. Um, it was, you know, it talks about, like, the gangster life at the beginning. <clears throat> um, the midway through, like, for me, it got boring and kind of, like, dragged on a little bit. Um, and, like, there's a lot of the same sort of topics. Um, like, I thought the musical composition was great. He is a true artist. Um, he's He is amazing, but for me, he didn't quite make the classic list. I got a 3.86 so on five, so that's a 77%. Sorry, folks. Well, Still good, but not a classic. I give it a 4.4. I think this album is truly fantastic. I think um, people should go back and listen to it. For one thing, it makes the album 444 make more sense. I kind of get why people are reacting a little more now because it's like to see where he started and to see where he ends up, it's like, okay, I see you now. Mm-hmm. You, you, he's... I feel like now that we have see where you started, we well, can understand still, like twelve albums together. Right, 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 right. But you <laughs> we'll can somewhat through. you can somewhat understand where he where on four forty four it feels like he's made certain mistakes and that and he, he's he's acknowledging that he was younger back then and now that he's older. And then he's, you're hearing about the back then and it's like okay, yeah. I, don't know, I think this is a true classic. Like I think this is an album where. It deserves its recognition and its fame. Granted, we still have a lot of other classic Jay-Z albums to hear, so we'll see how we feel after all of those ones. But on that note, I don't know. I don't have much more to say on this. There's not much more to say. It was yeah. a good album. If you guys liked it, Round two worked hit, out well. Hit yeah. that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Leave us the request. We will try to Thumbs get to them up. as quick as possible. Our list is getting really huge as... Yep. Holden keeps mentioning. It we really have other is. shows on the channel. It's like for every video we put up, we might get three requests lately. So just keep in mind. We but we're getting to it. We're getting to it. Um, we have other shows on the channel. Please check those out as well. Again, follow us all on our social media platforms. Also, and we've got we're planning something new and exciting. Ooh, What's it gonna be? Another What's kind of be? video. We got this coming. Anyway, so until week. the next classic quest, we'll Peace, see you love soon. You. Bye.